What do you think, Weepweep? Weep? How was your stay? Comparing the two villas, I definitely like this over the water villa more than the beach villa. I think, um, just despite the fact that the beach villa cost a lot more money per night, um, did you say like $500 per night? Yeah. More than the over the water villa. I think definitely the over the water villa is worth money, is worthy on the money spent. I think one of the most important reasons why I like the over the water villa more is for the swimming pool it doesn't face to any sand beach so it's always very clear clean to diving and then to swim around but in the um, beach villa the swimming pool started to get really uh, messy and unclear the water the second or third day because the wind was so wild that it blows some sand into the into the pool and also you don't really get to see the sea as here and you see, you see like the fish swimming around and they scoop around like a, a, in the group so you don't get to see that in the sand beach so my view is like I really like the I really really like the what of the water villa yeah and the secondly I want to say is the service and the personal I, can, I think it's the personalized service you experience here is top-notch like you can't really have it anywhere else in the world like obviously like this is one of lifetime experience for me um, we were talking about mm. and then um, everything is very much personalized including our checkout time you have other examples like our personal butler set up like a anniversary or sorry the honeymoon uh, congratulation special service in the room like a giving you like a fruit platter um, having a bath tap like a prepared for you when you come back home and deliver everything like personally into your room I think this kind of services you don't really experience anywhere else but here yeah there were so many our lifetime first uh, at this yeah. in this uh, holiday um, <clears throat> so we got to see the amazing fish that you know jump uh, around just outside our villa we got to see so many uh, kind of marine life like uh, a lot of fish when we were snorkeling shark we saw the dolphins uh, swimming with us on the on the boat when we were on that cruise um, we got to see a ton of stars we got to see a shooting star uh, while we were out here which was special we had that apple cider that our uh, butler brought to us for our honeymoon and it had 24 karat gold in there edible gold yeah and when we went 
to the spa. The spa, the massage itself was a new experience for both, uh, of, us. For, for both of us. Yeah. And when we walked in, they set up a nice little uh, yeah, honeymoon sort of uh, thing on the, uh, at the entrance. And we had our own private suite of our own bathroom, the bathtub, the sauna, steam room. Um, which was, you know, just an absolute amazing experience. And so, I don't think, you know, <laughs> it's gonna be a long time before we can top this holiday again, but this has been definitely special. Definitely. And also the food we've been consuming, like, yeah. well, despite the fact like you <laughs> probably like experience this fine dining experience every single time you go to any of the restaurants here because of the price. The food taste is so much, so much, I have to say it's so much better than any of the fine dining um, I had in London. Well, we didn't really have anything. Well, apart from the first night we had, mm. to be honest, your pasta wasn't that great in that mm. Italian restaurant. Apart from that pasta, I think everything else was awesome, <laughs> was very tasty and worth like every dollar you spent up here. Also, the, the experiences as well. Like once you sit down, they bring food over, they care for you. I think this, and including the room service, we ordered for a few times. The food taste was like amazing. Every single meal we ordered. So I they're think not cheap. They're not cheap. They're at not all. cheap. Expect to pay at least at least two hundred to three hundred fifty dollars per meal. Per meal that yeah. is excluding any kind of alcohol, and we don't drink, thank goodness. But if we were you know, I'm sure it would add another two hundred dollars or something yeah. to your bill. Um, <clears throat> so they're not cheap, but they are amazing, both in taste and quality, and you can taste that. And we got to eat a lot of like, I mean, we pretty much got to eat <laughs> a lot, like basically everything on the menu. Staying here for nine or eight nights, we got to eat the the highest top grade Japanese wagyu, A5 beef, premium, a, yeah, A5 premium. We got to have the Maldivian lobster. <laughs> Two <know>. of them. <laughs> yeah, we also had the Australian wagyu beef. Yeah, uh, you know, just we just had amazing food. Oh, and then at the Cantonese restaurant, which by the way we think is probably the best restaurant on, on the these island. island. Yeah. Um, uh, had some amazing beef there as well. Yeah. Their sweet and sour chicken. Which we, we according to yeah. like the sweet sour chicken expert here, he's the professional judge. It is the best sweet and sour chicken <laughs> you will ever have. It's like seventy dollars or whatever it is, stupid, crazy, expensive. Yeah. But uh, it's the best sweet and sour chicken you'll ever have. <laughs> yeah. So I'm uh, I'm feeling um, I'm pretty much settled here on this island of like doing anything. It will be now. It's the time for us to fly back. Well, we will stop by in Dubai for a few days by fly, before flying back to London. But definitely flying back to London facing reality. It's going to be, th this is a huge gap between the reality and the resort life. <laughs> ever. Mm. It's ever. Because previously we went on holidays, you stay in a hotel. Like you don't have this kind of services. Mm. Like personal butler, um, some personalized service to, to to every single detail, but back in London, we have to do everything ourselves. Oh, did you see oh, that? Yeah, flying fish. Yeah, the fish is oh, jumping fish. Jumping, yeah. Can you see that? Oh, fish is jumping. Uh, it's hard to see with this well, camera. Yeah. As we speak, yeah. there's some marine life going on there. Yeah. So we just got so distracted. But yeah, so um, it's going to be a hard landing for us to be back to London and trying to adjust our reality life um, there. Hi, uh... Okay, so this is at the south end of the island. We just see the recreation or the, um, the sporting center, diving center. Um, little activity area over here by the beach shack, which is a lunch bar type place. Over to our right is the uh, the gym, very nice. And what we're gonna try to do is uh, 
bike all the way around the island and see how long it takes to do that. Here's the beach shack. Here's the kids club for all the kids. Okay, so we are gonna go. Here we go. Here's room 128. This is our uh, villa to the left. And every villa here gets uh, number of uh, bikes free bikes for uh, all the guests of the villa can use The, uh, the main restaurant, a little boutique store. This island here is called the Culinary Island. Um, there's our, the, the main hotel bar to the left, Chinese restaurant called Summer Pavilion. called Secret Garden or something like that. And this is the uh, the overwater villa area. Woo. That's the spa straight ahead.
color of that ocean. Okay, and that is it. This is the full length of the island. We just went from complete end to end, the southern end all the way to the north end. It's not that big, but I love that uh, the intimate setting of this resort and the island, you don't run into too many guests. Uh, all the staff are extremely nice. And so, if this is the kind of your jam, then I think the Ritz-Carlton is definitely somewhere you want to check out when you come to the Maldives.